Once it turns red, you're good, you're good. Run. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Now I know it's been quite a while since I've uploaded, but I'm back. Now this isn't to say I'm gonna have a consistent schedule because I still have a lot going on, but I still have a few video ideas for the future and I was able to film one. So with that brief welcome back, let's get right into the video. So under normal circumstances, metals don't usually burn. Usually you just see them heat up until they melt. Although this is true for some very stable metals like gold and silver, most metals are actually very reactive. Very common metals like iron and aluminum and even magnesium, which are seen in many appliances, are reactive enough to the point where they will start burning if given enough oxygen to burn. This oxygen requirement can also be overcome by just making the metals finer, such as having metal powders. So metal powders are pretty cool when you burn them in oxygen. They're just bright but they're honestly pretty boring. Most people understand how burning things works because almost anyone ever has worked with fire of some sort or another. What's interesting about these metals is that some of them are reactive enough to react with something that most of us think is not reactive at all. That would be carbon dioxide, the stuff that's released from fire after things have been burned. For the amateur person, a large amount of carbon dioxide can actually be bought as dry ice, which in America at least is found in almost any grocery store. This is dry ice. It's an extremely cold solid that's around negative 110 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the concentrated stuff that comes off from burnt materials. This is also the stuff that's slowly causing climate change and is going to probably threaten all of life on Earth. Dry ice, or carbon dioxide itself, is not flammable at all no matter how hard you blast it with a blowtorch. It's great at putting out fires as shown right here, which is why it's used in fire extinguishers. I should note that it is a very bad idea to use these type of fire extinguishers against metal fires as you'll see very soon. So most of you guys have probably seen the demonstration of magnesium burning with dry ice. This is very common and uh, is actually what made me want to make this video. You only ever see people burning magnesium with dry ice, but you never see them trying anything else. So today I'm going to try out other metals. So obviously I have to start with the golden standard to set a baseline, which is going to be the magnesium and dry ice. The reaction is clearly accelerated by the dry ice and burns very hot and very bright. So now we're going to do the second part of this test where we put a piece of dry ice on top of the reaction to fully enclose it in dry ice and hopefully get a bigger reaction. That was definitely a stronger reaction. In layman's terms, the reason why carbon dioxide can act as oxygen with these metals is because the metals themselves are more reactive than the carbon and the carbon dioxide, so they're able to replace it. This means that they literally steal the oxygen, and in doing so, they release a lot of energy. This is actually the exact same reaction that goes on in thermite. So what we're doing here is basically a carbon dioxide thermite reaction. The next metal I want to try is going to be aluminum, which is going to be in the form of a powder. Aluminum is actually significantly less reactive than magnesium, by about 43% less reactive going off the redox potentials. This means that we should expect either no reaction, if that potential is not enough to pull the oxygens away from the carbon, or we should still see a reaction, but it may not be as vigorous as the magnesium. I'm using a special aluminum powder called dark aluminum. This means that it's extra reactive, so if this won't react, then aluminum never will. You can see that this reaction, although still very bright, is a lot less reactive. It doesn't even make any sputtering noises when burning. Let's try to do this reaction one more time, this time with the top of the dry ice, to see if we can get any different result. We end up getting the same result, no sputtering or noises or anything, but it is a little bit brighter. Interestingly, you can see some black stuff where the aluminum was burning. This is actually pure carbon, which is the byproduct of this reaction. I'm basically doing the job of a tree, but a lot faster and cooler. I do not speak for the trees. I am the trees. 
You're welcome, 10,967 species. For the next reaction, we're gonna do a big jump up in reactivity, and we're gonna use sodium metal. Something weird that happened is that no matter how much I heated the sodium metal that was directly in contact with the dry ice, it would not start to burn. I don't know if this was because of the high heat transfer of liquid sodium, which would never get hot enough because the dry ice was cooling it too fast, or if it was because of a layer of sodium carbonate that was forming that wasn't letting the sodium react. But no matter what, it just wasn't working. This time I tried again, but instead of putting the sodium directly into the dry ice, I decided to put a little paper towel separation between the metal and the dry ice. That little paper towel separation worked wonders, which was really nice because it was starting to annoy me. So for the next test, I was kind of scared to put on the top because I was afraid the sodium would just explode. So I started with a small scale test at first to make sure that my hand wouldn't be blown off. So that worked pretty well, and it wasn't too scary, so now we're gonna scale it up. That worked really well, so let's see that in a shitty slow motion. Now we're going to move on to the last metal that we're going to test. That's going to be lithium. Lithium is the highest reactivity of any metal on the periodic table. Its redox potential is over 10% higher than that of sodium, so we should see a very good reaction. It is sputtering. That was a beautiful reaction, especially with the little sputtering sparks at the end. That was probably the lithium boiling and shooting off tiny little droplets of it. What's interesting is that the very strong red color of burning lithium was drowned out by the white color, probably due to the sheer heat of that reaction. Now let's see what happens when we put a top onto it. That was a very big explosion. Let's see that in slow motion. So I think I can call all of these uh, reactions a success, but I feel like there's something missing. What if I were to try to turn these into a flash powder? A dry ice flash powder. So step one was to crush up the dry ice as fine as I possibly could. The next step was to mix this powderized dry ice with the other metal powders. I just did this by mixing them in a plastic bag, just in case they decided to go off from friction or shock. First up is going to be the aluminum powder. That worked pretty well, but I don't know if I could consider that a flash powder. To get this to burn faster, I added a little bit more dry ice, probably in a 75 to 25 ratio, whereas before it was around a 50-50 ratio. This ended up having a really hard time burning and didn't really work at all, so I just moved on to the magnesium. For the magnesium, I did another 50-50 ratio and I tried to light it. Again, I had lots of trouble, but I decided to fold it over and do a cone shape and then light it from there, and after doing that it worked very well. That's better. 
I actually had some magnesium powder as well, so I did the same thing, folding it into a cone and lighting it on fire. So the magnesium was a decent quote unquote flash powder. So now we're gonna move on to sodium. After again having problems with the sodium just melting and not actually reacting with the dry ice, I had to do the paper towel method again, even while it was cut up into small pieces and mixed in with uh, powderized dry ice. This time the sodium was able to let on fire, but it wasn't very impressive because it didn't really mix in as well as I thought it would with the dry ice and it kind of just stayed together in one blob. Lastly, we were gonna test small cut up pieces of lithium with the dry ice. I also wrapped these in the paper towel and I was just going to light them on fire and then dump a little bit of dry ice on top of them to help it all ignite. So in conclusion, we found that, um, we found the solution to climate change. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the video and I hope to get another video out in a uh, semi-reasonable sort of time frame.